welcome to this week's YouTube video. So for this video, I wanted to show you how I made a fiber optic dress for really, really cheap. Muffin, that's not for you. Stop it. Don't eat that, don't eat that pet. Daisy, no, don't eat that cord. Baby. Hi everybody, so I wanted to show you how I was able to make my fiber optic outfit for relatively cheap and how you can make your very own for yourself. The summer of 2019, I started planning out my Halloween costume for that year. I knew that I wanted it to have LED lights or fiber optics, but I wasn't really sure how to make that work. I did a ton of research, I watched YouTube videos, I looked up listings for products, and I just went through Google Photos in general, as you can see here. I was searching like a mad person, reading any article I could about fiber optics in fashion. I would found a wonderful article talking about light whips and how they could be worked into garments to make something that lit up, but unfortunately it was a bit out of my price range at the time. So that year for my Halloween costume, I just opted to add some battery powered fairy lights to my costume and I just safety pinned them to the inside. That way they could be taken out and used in other projects later. Then last year, Crescent Shea, who is on YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok, I believe, made an amazing light up ball gown out of fiber optic fabric. Then fast forward to this year and the company Luma Sonata, I, I probably didn't say that right, Luma Sonata, I, hopefully that's right. Um, they started gifting fashion and costuming influencers this light up fiber optic fabric. So there have been so many people on the internet lately making these light up gowns and it reminded me that I never ended up doing anything with fiber optics and I would still really, really love to do that. Little 2019 me absolutely wants to do this project. So I started doing a bunch of research a couple months ago and and I was looking into buying my own LED lights that are not pre-wired and I was going to try and figure out how to wire them all and do basic electrical things. Um, as you can see though, I obviously do not know very much about these electrical things and in the end I realized that I could just use a battery pack powered LED wreath light uh, from the Dollar Tree. I would actually bought these light packs before the Dollar Tree went to a dollar twenty-five, so that was really fortunate of my hoarder-like tendencies to do that in advance. If you're unable to find anything at the Dollar Tree, you can always buy these LED lights at Walmart. They have something similar during Halloween and Christmas. And I bought some of this black electrical tape and I bought and then I also bought some of this coiled fiber optics. Um, it was less than ten dollars and it seemed like a pretty good starting point. And at the end of the day, I actually had enough to make the whole costume, the bodice and the skirt, without having to buy more. So this is a pretty affordable project, especially if you can't afford to buy um, fiber optic fabric. Now maybe you've been watching this pumpkin and you've been wondering what it is. Well, it is fiber optics. Um, I've had this since I was a small child and I've always been absolutely amazed by fiber optics and how they work. Uh, it's really neat. You can see all the fibers on the inside. These are end glow fibers, so the light travels through the fiber on one end and comes out the other end glowing. There isn't a lot of light escaping from the fiber, but rather from the end of the fiber. If you plan on making this project, I definitely recommend getting end glow fibers and not side emitting fibers. If you want some light to escape on the sides, I'll show you how to do that later on in the video. The very first thing I did for this project was to take my LED string lights from the Dollar Tree, pop in some batteries, and turn them on. The little colorful plastic decorations can be taken off to see the exposed light bulb. Now fiber optics do not create their own light, but instead light is able to travel through them. So every time the tip of this fiber is touched to the tip of the light bulb, the light starts traveling through the fiber and comes out the other end. You're able to also add nicks with sandpaper, scissors, or anything sharp so that the light is able to escape from the length of the fiber. Something else that's really neat about these fiber optics is that you can send any colored light through them. The weaker your light source, the less light that will come through on the other end, but if you look closely, you can see a little red light. In this clip, I'm actually using daylight. I'm just touching the other end of the fiber to the window. As I said earlier, if you would like the light to escape on the length of the fiber instead of just at one end, you're going to have to nick it. I use an X-Acto knife and I individually scratched and nicked each 
part. Once I had done my little experiments with the fibers and figured out how to use it best, I started sewing fibers down to a piece of fabric to try and figure out how I could best attach it to my bodice. I did this by using a tight zigzag stitch. Okay, I'm not in total darkness because I'm not really sure um, if you'll be able to see the stitch lines and the fabric if it's in total darkness, but this way you can kind of see a little bit of both. Really, really bright parts don't show up super well. Um, but yeah, it looks pretty cool. I'm gonna see if maybe it looks better if you look in the mirror. Okay, I feel like that actually does help a little bit. Um, you can still kind of see the bright parts. But yeah, it looks pretty cool. This is where I have a bundle of like four, and then these are all individual fibers. I'm thinking I might be able to do some like cool designs and swirls and things that you don't typically see on fiber optic dresses because I have the power to make this however I want. I can sew the base of the bodice with whatever seam lines I want without having to worry about fibers being cut and then I can go in and add all the fibers in later. Stitching over the fibers didn't really seem to dull anything or make this any worse. Um, and if I use a clear thread, that might add a neat effect as well. So I really, really like this because I'm going to be able to do some really cool things. What if I tried spelling a word with the lights? That would be absolutely amazing. Like on the front of a skirt or the bodice, just like a really big word, like glow. All right, here we go. I've been having trouble with the fibers kind of slipping out of their, out of their little electrical case out of their little electrical tape casing and the fibers just don't want to line up perfectly. The more I play around with this, the more it kind of shifts in and out. So what I want to do is melt all these fibers together so that they're one little lumpy knob and that they're all in like a bundle. Um, I'm just gonna do that with fire. And I'm right out here by the pool so I can just yeet everything in there if something goes wrong with the fire. I don't know if this will work. This might actually make it worse and the light might not be able to travel through because it's going to get stuck and dispersed in the knob or it might actually help the light get through because it'll have a bigger point to shine into and then shine down into the fibers. So it'll be interesting to see. Oh, fire. We're just gonna heat these. Ah, oh, da, 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 they're melting. Well, um, these melted really how did a makeup artist do this hold on as you can probably already tell that did not work the fibers burned very unevenly and became blackened so i evened out my fibers and i put them up against my hot iron with a cover of course for about a minute this worked absolutely perfectly at this point i felt confident enough to actually start the dress so i took out my favorite sewing pattern that i use for bodices and i started cutting it up out of this old white sheet i planned on having a lining for this dress that would hold the boning and then i planned on having the outer fabric that would have the fiber optics sewn onto it. Now, of course, plastic boning and plastic fiber optics are going to melt if they're ironed, so any and all ironing needs to be done before you start your project. Also, may I suggest that scrubs become the official pants of sewing? Because these pockets are so perfect for holding sewing supplies like scissors. Hello, everybody, and welcome to my sewing channel where I will be showing you how to show, sew things and stuff like that. Also, if you like shoes and you want to see some really cool shoes, check out this video. Also, it looks like we skipped all of the steps in this sewing tutorial today, so I'm sorry about that, folks, but now you have a bodice. Ta-da! This is my bodice. I do have a small enough torso and waist that I'm going to be able to use one 10-strand LED light with battery pack. These are from the Dollar Tree for the reeds. I feel like I already probably will have explained that in the video at this point. Um, but not knowing what editing me is doing, that's what this is. I took off all of those little dragonflies, so now I have my nice, smooth, flat lights. I've figured out that I can fit about eight fiber optic fibers onto the end of each light from my experiment earlier, so that melted down fits perfectly like that. Really, I don't even know if I'll need that many, but because I do have the lights so close together, I might as well make use of them and add in as many fibers as I can. I separated my lining from my outer fabric, that way I could put the boning in the lining fabric later and I could sew the fiber optics onto the fashion or outer fabric at the moment. I was going to sew them all up and down the length of the bodice, and I also made sure to leave a nice little tail so that I could bundle the fibers at the end. And again, you're just going to change your stitch to a zigzag 
zigzag stitch and go right over the fiber. From what I can tell, this did not add any nicks or dings to the fiber and it was perfectly fine. I did end up sewing fibers onto both sides of the bodice, but here you can just see the left side and there's a little bit of a close up so that you can see those zigzag stitches better. It's a little messy, but it worked. Once all of my fibers were sewn down, I just started to bundle them with electrical tape. I just took a little bundle and started to tightly wrap the tape around. Then I cut off the ends so that they'd be nice and even. Then it was just a matter of melting each of those bundles together so that they would have that little knob on the top. I would definitely recommend doing this in a ventilated area. I have all of the fibers on my bodice pieces bundled, taped up, and I ironed all of the end bits. So that's good to go. Now I'm going to tape everything to the light source. So yay! This was pretty much just the same process, taking the electrical tape and winding it around the light and the fiber bundle very tightly so that they wouldn't fall apart. Just make sure that your light strand is nice and straight and nothing's tied up and tangled. Here's a little sneak peek of the bodice in the light and in the dark. All right, here's a better look of the bodice in the dark. I really don't like how the end glows look here. I really wish I had done something different, but you know what, it is what it is. Some of the fibers aren't releasing any light. They're releasing all of the light just at the tip. Um, but that's fine because I'm going to go in and nick it and everything. You can already see some of those nicks. You can see some of the fibers are really, really glowing, almost like a side glow, and I don't know why that is. <laughs> I love how I added the curves, but I'm really regretting that I didn't do a heart. I wish I had done a heart, but you can see, I mean, it has good glow. Like you can see, can't see my face, but you can see anything that gets near it. And it's just going to glow better once I add in the nicks. This shot is not really relevant to the tutorial, but I just wanted to show you because I think it's so neat how the fibers will glow in a shadow even, but they won't really glow in light. So I don't know. I just thought it was cool and I didn't want to cut out this clip. I've inserted the boning into the lining. Right now you're looking at the insides. This is the outside. Um, I have my fibers sewn on this side and then I've just kind of folded these up in the way that the wires kind of want to bend. I don't want to put an actual crease in them. I want to let them curve in. So instead of going straight up, I'm kind of curving to the left or the right and that helps them lay flat. I'm going to sew this all in by hand. Just kind of like tack it down and then I will bind these together. Yeah. The problem is, is you are going to see the black, but I don't think it's going to matter too much when it's lit up, hopefully. I really wish I had had a blackout curtain because my original plan was to do a layer of blackout curtain in between these two layers, but I just don't have a blackout curtain. Um, I was thinking maybe felt or something would have been nice and thick, but oh well. I kind of originally wanted to make this dress in black as well, and I'm wishing that I had made the corset in black because it would be thicker. Like, this white fabric is just really thin, um, but I didn't have any black. So just a little warning for you guys, I expected the bodice to shrink from all of the zigzag stitching on the top. But I didn't realize it had shrunk this much until right now. So this is the bodice. Normally I put the boning in the um, fashion layer, but I chose to put it in the lining. That way I wouldn't have to worry about zigzag stitching the um, fibers over the boning. And then I did top stitch on the outer bit. And look how much it's shrunk. It didn't shrink too bad left to right, surprisingly. I feel like this is the opposite way I expected it to go, but it shrunk top to bottom. Anyway, I just used some thrifted binding for the bottom and then I sewed in some loops for the back. I also finished adding in all those little nicks onto the bottom, which are very much worth it, but also very, very time consuming to put in. Next time I make something with fiber optics, I want to try different methods for adding in nicks, uh, maybe like sandpaper or something, but I'm not sure. Now for the fiber optics skirt. I made 10 little bundles and each of these bundles has eight fibers. I made these the same way as the bundles on the corset. When making these bundles, I wanted them to hit right under my knee and I also cut them at different lengths so that it would add more dimension and movement. Just like the corset, I just took my bundles to the iron and melted them together to make sure that there wouldn't be any loose hairs, aka fibers, slipping out of the electrical tape casing. I will have to say that this was a hundred times easier to make than the corset and you don't even need any sewing skills for this. It was just so much fun. 10 out of 10 recommend. Then I just taped all of my bundles onto the LED lights and my job 
all practically dropped to the ground. I was so excited. It was just so pretty and magical. Don't get me wrong, the bodice is really neat, and even though there are a lot of things I would love to fix on it already, it was pretty good for my first attempt with fiber optics, but the skirt is where it's at. The movement just adds a whole nother element to these fiber optics, and it just it, like I said, it just adds a whole nother element. It's just very, very neat. I chose to hold all of the fibers in one hand like this to get that whip effect. And it's pretty cool, uh, but I like it as a skirt a lot more. Quite a few people have been commenting on my videos with their concerns on the skirt getting tangled. And I suppose the skirt does get a little bit tangled, but that adds to the effect and the movement. And it's really easy to untangle and just wind back up anyway. So the skirt really doesn't have many steps. Once again, you're going to cut the fibers. You're going to tape them up into bundles, melt those bundles on the iron, and then you're going to tape the bundles onto your LED light. Of course, you're welcome to just leave it like that, but if you want to encase the wires and keep them from getting a bit tangled and messed up, you can hide them in a bias tape binding. I just used some extra wide bias tape and I folded my fibers and wires into the skirt like this. Once I was done with that, I hand sewed. That way I could sew around each of the areas where the fibers put poked out from the, um, the bias tape waistband. Yeah, that's the word. <laughs>